and traumatized. And I think you're starting to see some of the, the footage that we saw up there. Wolf, I've been doing this job for more than 10 years. I have never seen a situation as desperate this, as this, as emotionally charged as this. And I've never seen a, a rescue effort as ad hoc and as improvised as this. I think we were all crying on our flight back from there. Uh, and and I, I can say that, that, that these men were able to save about 60 people today, but there are still, the Kurdish commander here says, tens of thousands of people still trapped on that mountain, about 45 minutes flight from where I am right now. Well, it's, a, it's an amazing journey, uh, Ivan. Uh, obviously, we're showing the view, viewers video now of people coming aboard the helicopter where you are. We see those little children. Uh, you, we see you right there. They're struggling just to get out of that situation. You said about 20 people managed to get onto your helicopter. There were a few other helicopters. But really, when you think about the tens of thousands who may be endangered right now, the food that you drop. The, the lives that you save clearly important. What about the American food uh, and water and medicine, the pallets that are being dropped by the U.S. military? Uh, did you get? Did you see any evidence that it's reaching the folks there? You know, we were only, I, I, I think, over over the mountain for about 10 minutes, and in that time, I, I, we couldn't see a lot. We ran, weren't able to get out of the helicopter. There was no organization on the ground to to usher in the the sickest the most vulnerable people to to the to the helicopter so it, it was very chaotic and there was the danger quite literally that too many people would swarm the aircraft and and in fact i saw and this was uh, unpleasant to see uh, one old man was actually kind of kicked away uh, as the helicopter had to take off because it, it it had its i'm told seats about 15 and there were far more than that on board the helicopter there were a cluster of shacks at one point on the mountain and i did see that there was barbed wire protecting some kind of a, a crude perimeter around this cluster of shacks a few barriers as well and i saw one uh kurdish fighter uh, with a kalashnikov i didn't see much of an armed presence there at all uh, the conditions there look pretty grim. I mean, there were there were people sitting under the shade of trees who kind of who kind of came out. I saw somebody laying in the back of a, a truck, who may have been dead or very very ill. Uh, and I saw another woman being being moved in, or, or or an old man in a, in a wheelbarrow. And we have to remember these people have been up there for seven days after they fled the ISIS militants. Now. The Kurds have organized the land corridor on occasion to Syria, and we're told that they've uh, managed to evacuate by land about 6,000 families. They have to make a 15-kilometer, that's like a 10-mile walk to Syria, and they get shelled periodically on that walk. The most young, the most elderly, those who are wounded, can, clearly can't make that journey. And it is incredible to think that a week into this crisis, you're still having this this kind of ad hoc evacuation process where a couple of rickety Iraqi Air Force helicopters are, are kind of blowing in, picking up a handful of people in, in these really chaotic circumstances and then taking off and doing it again and risking enemy gunfire while making that journey. It, it, it's kind of incredible to think in this day and age that that is one of the only ways that you can evacuate civilians from this place and that's why the Kurdish commander on the ground here is making an appeal to the international community to apply international law to stop what he describes as the genocide being committed against the Yazidi religious minority here in northern Iraq, Wolf. Were the people that you rescued on your helicopter, you and the, the Kurdish Peshmerga forces, the Iraqi military, who all risked their lives to go in there, were they all Yazidis or were they some of them Kurds, were the, some of them Shiites? Uh, what, what do we know about the, the people who were saved, the 20 or so on your helicopter? Yeah, I, I'm told that most of these people are uh, from the Yazidi religious group, uh, Wolf. I, di I didn't have time to ask people what faith they came from uh, on board the helicopter because many of these people, I, I cannot stress this enough, were totally traumatized. These people were weeping. There were little kids crying on this helicopter. Uh, there was not a dry eye on the aircraft. These people have been trapped there for seven days. Now, now I spoke to the older brother 
of this 15-year-old girl, Aziza, who was crying the whole flight because her father got lost as they fled the ISIS militants. Now, his br her brother described uh, really chilling circumstances. He said that the ISIS fighters were stopping vehicles loaded with basically refugees and pulling people off of those like tractors pulling wagons pulling the families out and putting in them into two buildings one was a wedding hall and one was some building that was used to store water and keeping them in there under guard and they were locked up in there and he says there's his family narrowly escaped getting grabbed they had to run and hide in a sewer to escape the ISIS militants. He said that the fighters, I asked them what nationality they were. He said they were ethnic Arabs. They were Arabs from the area. That's what he described them as. Not the, the foreign fighters, the jihadis who have come in, but likely people from neighboring communities uh, that these people have lived next to uh, for generations. And that's chilling because what seems to be taking place here across northern Iraq is ethnic and sectarian cleansing because everybody I've talked to who fled and the estimates are in the hundreds of thousands come from these religious and ethnic minorities uh, and uh, the Kurdish authorities are, are directly accusing ISIS and their allies of ethnic and sectarian cleansing here in northern Iraq.